Welcome everyone to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. I've been looking forward to this one for a little bit since it seems like they have more of a career built system to this. There's more objectives, missions, all that fun stuff. And honestly, that's really what I want to try. Like all this stuff that we're seeing right now, just even in the menu, looks like a good time. So with that said, let's get this setup started and uh, we'll go from there. As far as settings, yeah, well, I'll stick to whatever the default is. I wasn't sure if it's going to take us right into creating our character because there is customization. For now, we're using uh, mouse and keyboard, but I do have a throttle stick that I'll be using with me or for most of this. Uh, all assists, learn the ropes with the visual and the piloting assistance. Yes. Okay. So here we go. Yeah, they have an actual character creator, which is interesting because I think you can get out your plane at like almost any or whatever aerial vehicle. Clear skies ahead, climbing for cruising altitude. Huh. Uh, let's see. Aviate, navigate, communicate. It's just the basics. Aviate, navigate, communicate. There's even it's voice the lines. Interesting was not expecting that. All right, let's just choose a preset. Uh, let's start cabin with this crew, one for now. Please prepare the cabin for landing. The, the voice lines there sound a little bit like they might be AI, but that's kind of a guess. Okay, so there's, there's actually a decent amount here. We'll stay with the default. Different hairstyles, what do we got here? Go with that, and then hair colors. Sure, we'll stick with this one. Oh, what kind of voices do we have? Aviate, navigate, cabin crew. Fla visual on runway, ATGS. Ladies and gentlemen, We've begun our descent to destination. Entering spray zone, guys. Rotate at VR. Positive rate. Entering spray zone, guys. Entering clear skies ahead. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Visual on runway, prepare for land. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Aviate, navigate, communicate. Cabin crew, please prepare the cabin for landing. All right, we'll stick with the default one there. All right, we'll do a little bit of customization here. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna go full like flight pilot, uh, commercial pilot outfit. I think we'll go something more casual. I mean, I'm assuming you'll you'll probably be able to come in here and change this at any time too. We'll go with one of these. We change the color of it. Okay, wow. There, yeah. There's honestly more customization than I initially thought. I did not know that I was going to have like this at all. Let's go with, I don't know, some casual shoes too. That might be a little too casual. That works. Uniforms. You can throw those on. Okay, then you actually get to choose a co-pilot, so you can do none. ATC, requesting clearance for entering spray zone, guys. Adjusting altitude for optimal coverage. Huh. Let's go with honestly, yeah. Entering go spray with that guy. zone, guys. Adjusting altitude for optimal coverage. ATC, requesting clearance for departure. Sure, that works. All right. Oh, we know you, Cassis. Hey, they know me. Cool. Okay, so here we are. Let me actually take a quick uh, look at the settings here. Okay, so we got full screen. Now, the one thing I did see about this game is of course a lot of people had issues on launch and it's actually the day after launch because of that uh it seems to be a lot better now i don't know what happened 
with everything yesterday, but they definitely had a lot of issues with people trying to even get the game running and all that. So, but we'll see how this is. Let's jump into the career mode. This is what I've been looking forward to the absolute most. We got things like rescue missions, actual objectives. I think this is just all the stuff that we've seen in the trailers. It almost looks like it's a, yeah, we can skip through this. The rise of a pilot. Choose any location in the world where you can start your career. Damn, okay. Yeah, that's so cool. Oh my God, man. It's it's wild what they're they've been able to do. All right, we're gonna go. We're started in Philadelphia. Now, where's the Philadelphia International? Or can we not choose that one? I guess we gotta choose this. Do not choose this as a starting location. Okay. What about this one? That's the same one. Is there any other? Oh, uh, yeah, like Philly International would be right here. Or around here. There it is. We can't use it. What the heck? Okay. Uh, then let's go maybe... New York? What about this one? There we go. This is where we can begin. Linden, 1120, 2024, Hughes Airport. Let's do it. I guess you can't start at like a giant airport. You got to choose like a smaller scale one. Oh, that's pretty cool. What? Hello there. You must be Casas, right? What? <laughs> okay, this is weird. It's totally AI voices, but still, this is weird. Welcome to Linden. I'm Miles, the owner of this aero club. Here at the club, we provide all the training lessons you need to get started and earn your private pilot license. Okay. Then, once you've earned your PPL, you can build up your flight hours and get more experience by taking people out on first flights. But before any of that, let's head outside and take a flight to get familiar with our aircraft and the local surroundings. If it lets me use my... Okay. Trying to see if it use, lets me use the uh, flight stick. I am using a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro, the classic one Welcome for to years. Airport. This is where all our flying adventures begin. Why don't you walk around a bit while I finish the pre-flight preparations? Okay, walk around a bit. Today we will be flying in a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. It's the main trainer airplane in our flight school. Our Cessna has got a glass cockpit and a 180 horsepower engine, climbs well, and is easy to fly. It's one sweet ride. I'm ready if you are, so hop in and buckle up. Let the good times roll. Let the good times roll. Shift C to enter the aircraft. Welcome aboard. While you settle in, let's go over our flight plan. After taking off, we will climb to 1,500 feet above sea level, and then fly over the airport to enjoy the view. Ready? Why don't you start the engine for us? Engine started. Perfect. The wind is from 270 degrees direction with a speed of nine knots. So we'll be taking off from runway 27. Okay, it's actually letting me use okay. the flight stick now. Let me taxi to the runway. Before taxi. All right, this is pretty cool. This, I I mean, it, it's going to be interesting. 
It's gonna be interesting to see. You can now look, uh, switch between cockpit and external view. All right, now comes the fun part. After releasing the brakes and applying full power, we will speed up and take off once we reach 60 knots airspeed. We will be climbing at 75 knots, which is the recommended climbing speed for the Cessna Skyhawk. While climbing, we will follow a left-hand traffic pattern oh. and make two turns. Don't worry if it sounds overwhelming. I am here to help. Okay. Release the parking brakes. Otherwise, as long as you're here to help. Good. Got it. Ready for takeoff? Apply full power to get us moving. Use the throttle lever with R to increase the... Okay, so let me see if it lets me change the controls now. Over to... Yeah, here we go. Let's swap to this. Oh. Got it. You handle the yoke, and I'll take care of the pedals, steering the aircraft on the runway during takeoff. Maintain full power for takeoff, please. Please. All right, still showing keyboard controls, but for right now, I, I'm actually using the... We have the... reached 55 knots. Pull the yoke a little bit to lift off. The flight stick. Reach upwind end. Oh, okay, that takes us back. I'm trying to figure out where's the the keybind for exterior. There we go. Perfect climbing attitude and speed. I see you know what you're doing. We are approaching our first turn. As you'll see, the Cessna 172 requires very little yoke movement to turn. We are 300 feet above the ground. I will retract the flaps. You keep climbing. You can start turning left. Okay. Turn left. Trying to keep it nice and smooth here. Obviously, we're going through the tutorial right now, so not going to be any expert keep climbing and anytime for the soon. Next turn. All right, we're still, still climbing. There is a key bind too, like you can see right there. You can just disable that. Okay, so that way it's, it's nice we and clean. Almost there. Remember, we need to climb to 1,500 feet. But for keep right us 500 now, feet above the traffic pattern. I'll let it keep going. You're banking too much. Yeah. He's up on your yoke movement. I had a feeling. I had a I feeling I probably day. was. The clouds are beautiful, aren't they? Try to grab some screenshots here. There we are. 1,500 feet above sea level and 500 feet above the traffic pattern. We have safe separation with the other airplanes. Look around, see our airport. Let's fly over it. Okay. Oh, head towards the airport. Might be a little too steep there. But we're doing good. Doing good so far. Fantastic. I know that you're busy navigating and controlling the plane, but don't forget to enjoy the view. Of course. You gotta, I mean, that's the whole entire point of Flight Sim. You gotta enjoy the view. By the way, let me know what got, uh, what you guys prefer as far as viewpoints go. First person, third, mix of both. Well done. I'll probably continue to do a mix of both. I hope you enjoyed the flight. Let's head back to the ground now. Okay. Return to the airport. Congratulations, mission success. Not bad. I'm glad that we flew together oh. today. This might be the first chapter in your pilot's uh. journey, if you want to embark on it. Let's catch up at our headquarters. He's uh, clipping through the ground a little bit. Yeah, there's a little bit of weird jank to this. You seem comfortable out there. I'm sure you will get your PPL in no time. Thanks. There's a laptop in the office that shows all the certification information you'll need for your PPL exam. Take a look. Take a look. 
Head to the next uh, certification to pass your PPL exam. Here you can see all the different certifications you can pass throughout your career. Your first step is to work towards your private pilot license. Okay. Yeah, so you can see pretty much everything here. Hook endorsement, hoist endorsement. I guess these are a lot of uh, tutorials and then actual missions too. Unless if, all right, so if we back out specializations, companies, and then actual mission. Okay, yeah, so these are just the tutorial missions then. That's so cool. I don't know, something about that I, I love. Let me see here. Let's go into the controls again. Distances. I'll leave all assists on it for now. This, it, Flight Simulator is always one of those games where it takes some time to tweak it a bit after you do um, get started. Unless, if, of course, this is one of the games that you always play. And that's a, a different story. You already know what you're doing then. Yeah, let's turn off camera shake. Cursor acceleration. Throw that down. There's VR too. I always forget that Flight Sim has VR. All right, let's get to the next mission. All the training lessons you'll need to pass the PPL exam are available here. Make sure you're comfortable with these before taking the exam. Okay. Training. So we got sim controls, learn the basics of interactions and cameras, aircraft essentials, get familiar with the primary controls, altitude. So I usually like starting with the mouse and then once we're actually flying, I switch over to the uh, flight stick, of course. All right, let's go through this. Flight plan images. Time to learn the basics. Before you get to know more about aircraft controls, we will go over basic camera and toolbar interactions, which are essential tools to master in Flight Simulator. All right, let's see. Go ahead and start it. Oh. Welcome to Sedona. I'm Captain Jess Molina, and I'll be your instructor. For this lesson, we're going to start on the ground and focus on some basic concepts. Fundamentals every pilot needs to know before hitting the skies. This is your plane, a classic, the Cessna 172. Take a look around it. In the simulator, anytime you want, you can easily switch to cursor mode. Oh yeah, how do we do that? Cursor toggle. The cursor is handy for interacting with menus and cockpit controls or instruments. Okay. As you can see, activating the cursor also displays the toolbar at the top of the screen. Yep. The toolbar is a quick access menu that allows you to control various aspects of the simulation. Try to find and open the controls panel. Open the controls panel in the toolbar. Uh, is that one of these? I mean, like this thing? In the toolbar. Oh, up here. Okay. Like this? I don't know. <laughs> the controls panel is oh, there a useful it is. reminder of the button layout for the devices you're currently using. Now okay. try to find and open the camera panel in the toolbar. Yep, camera panel camera right panel here. The camera panel allows you to access the various views and camera modes of the simulation. Oh. Go ahead and close all the panels for now. Except for this one, I'm assuming. In front of you is the yoke, the primary means of controlling the aircraft. In the simulation, you will be controlling the aircraft with your peripherals of choice. So, let's hide the yoke for now. Whoa. Okay. Hide it for now. Hold on, let me go back to this. With the cursor, point point at the yoke and press 
and uh, hide it pressing all right as we've seen oh. when you look around you it's easy to rotate the camera huh but you can also move it freely in the cockpit to get a better view of anything you want to see even through a window to look outside yep move the camera I see now it wants me to use this to move around hold wait what was that wait I can see myself now Move the camera using shift D. Now, reset the camera to its original position. Okay. Get back to pilot view. All right. Got it. That covers all the main camera functions available in the simulation. Try to familiarize yourself with them a bit more, then reset the camera to its original position whenever you're done. Okay. Now I'm good. I'm good. Great. Training complete. All right. That's it. <laughs> hey, I'll take the achievement. Achieve an A grade in any base training mission. We got some XP out of it. Okay, let's do next training. I like that you can just select next training and go straight to it. Are we in space now? We'll go through some... I mean, this is all part of the career mode, so... Plus, it seems like we get some achievements or XP for it doing this, so might as well. Let's get you familiar with the aircraft, a Cessna 172, and a few commands to navigate it through the skies. In front of you is the yoke. The yoke is like a steering wheel, more or less. Turn yeah. it left or right to control the ailerons and more bank the aircraft less. into turns. Look at the trailing edge of the wings while turning the yoke to see the effect on the ailerons. Look at the end of the wings by using shift K. Okay. Trying to, I mean, it's working. And then move them with A and D. It wants me to do everything at once. I'm doing, I, I'm, look at the end of the wing. Yes. Okay, we're looking, and then move it with A and D. I see it. I do see it moving. You can see it right there. Okay. Okay, you got to hold it. Now, the difference between the yoke and a steering wheel is you can pull or push on the yoke. This controls the elevator at the back of the aircraft to make it climb or descend. Look at the horizontal stabilizer while you pull on the yoke. You can see how it affects the elevator. Look at the horizontal tail at the back of the aircraft by using that. And then, okay, we have to use this. Doesn't exactly allow me to. Nice. There we go. Down at your feet are the rudder pedals. They steer the aircraft when you're on the ground. The upper part of the pedals also control your brakes. In the air, they control the rudder at the end of the vertical stabilizer to yaw the aircraft. This is mostly for small corrections. Yep, you can see for it. For coordinating turns or compensating for a plane's tendency to pull left during takeoffs and climbs. Look at the vertical tail while operating the pedals to see the effect on the rudder. Yep, I see it. I see it. Look at the vertical tail. What, you want me to look back there? Hold on. I broke it. Shift. Okay. So we need to go all the way back. Man, it's so weird that you can't, like, manually control it with the throttle. Like this, I guess. Great. Yep, Q and E. Last but not least, the throttle is located near the center of the cockpit. Yep. Pushing forward will increase power. Pulling back will decrease power. First, look at the throttle and select it. Okay. It's weird that the uh, little static Keep that they do and push it is forward in the to game. Increase power. It's not me. Okay, they want me to actually... 
do this. Push it power forward. Power is increased. Now pull it back to decrease power. Yep, I got that. Power is decreased. Now we'll do the same without focusing on it. Deselect the throttle. Look away from the throttle and increase power. Okay. Just do it like this. Set yep. your throttle to idle. Excellent. When the engine is on, you'll be able to see the power change on your RPM indicator. You will find it on your PFD screen in the top left corner. Okay. We'll get the RPM indicator. Shift K. Top left corner. Oh, uh, like up here. Yeah, this thing. Man, that is barely highlighted. <laughs> I see it. I'm looking at it. Yes. Can I zoom in? Okay. Yeah, there's a little bit of jank to this. This tells you how fast oh, the engine go. is spinning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. Next, take a look at your current speed on the airspeed indicator. It's on the left on your PFD screen. Mm -hmm. It measures the speed in knots. To check your altitude, look to the altimeter. It's on the right on your PFD screen. Yep. Not all aircraft have integrated screens with all this information. A lot of them rely on analog instruments. Old you can school. find the analog versions of the airspeed indicator and the altimeter just above the throttle. They are respectively on the left and right. Okay. Go to these. Yeah, these are the analog ones. The analog altimeter has three hands similar to a clock. The long, thick pointer indicates 100 foot intervals. The short, thick one is 1,000 foot intervals. And the long, thin one counts 10,000 foot intervals. That's all for today. Next time, we'll see how it feels in the air. All right. Yeah, let's go do it. I'm ready to get off the ground. I'm, I'm eager to take off again. <laughs> Aircraft essentials. Nice. Next training. Altitude pitch. Go right into it. demonstrate pitch I've drawn three lines on the windshield notice how the middle line matches the horizon while we're flying level this is the cruise attitude the lower dotted line is the climb attitude and the upper one is the descent attitude let's dig deeper into what that means pull back gently on the yoke until the climb attitude line matches the horizon then maintain that attitude Okay, I see. Maintain the lower line. We're gaining altitude. But we're losing airspeed, proving you can't avoid basic physics while making a climb. Excellent. That's good. I see. Keep working on it, you'll get better. Now, let's level back out. Yep. Go ahead and gently pull back on the yoke. Our speed is increasing and our altitude is stable. When the climb attitude line matches the horizon, maintain that attitude. That's good. That's okay. Push gently on the yoke until the descent attitude line matches the horizon. The descent one right that there. Attitude. Okay. So we're matching the top bar Go ahead and gently pull to back what on we the see as far as we can see. Yep. As expected, with a nose down attitude, our altitude is decreasing while our speed is picking up. When the climb attitude line matches the horizon, maintain that attitude. That's good. Got it. Keep working on it. You'll get better. It keeps okay. automatically pulling back. back. I'm not flight. doing that. <laughs> Alright, put the now regular line. Now your speed line. is decreasing, and your altitude is stable. Go ahead, and gently pull back on the yoke. 
That's okay. When the climb attitude line matches the horizon, maintain that attitude. Wait, you want me to climb I think up a bit again? More practice may be a good idea. What? Ma'am, I'm Try literally to make only small adjustments to your pitch to avoid overcorrection. Yes, I understand. There we go. Rating complete. Wait, did we get like a worse rating there? <laughs> I'm curious to see. Oh, we did. <laughs> Pitch up the climb. Hey, I'll take it. Sure. Now, I'm fine with that. I, I'm okay with that. As long as we got the training done, that's all that ever matters, in my opinion. There's always room to improvement with more advanced thing. Room for improvement. All right, get into the next one. For this lesson, we're going to Ooh. use a line drawn on the windshield to indicate the crew's attitude. I've also added another dotted line to help you bank properly for left turns. Okay. Gently move the yoke to the left until the dotted line matches up with the horizon. Then maintain that bank. Like this. Gotta maintain this. So essentially when the thing in the top right Excellent. turns green, it means that you're you're meeting that now, let's see level back out. step. Okay. Oh, right there. That's okay. That's okay. What do you mean that's okay? That's good. Remember to maintain altitude while leveling off. For the next step, turning to the right, let's see how you do on your own without any markings. You can see a series of notches representing 10 degree increments on the attitude indicator part of your PFD. As a general rule, you always want to keep your turns under 30 degrees. Okay. Start banking right until you're lined up with the second notch to the right on the attitude indicator. Then, maintain that 20 degree bank while remaining at the same altitude until I ask you to stop. Bank 20 degrees. Is that too much? Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, not enough. Hold. Keep working on there it. it. Is. You'll get better. Keep working to maintain a constant altitude. I mean, we're turn. in the air. There's nothing else around us. So we're, we're doing good. Now. All right. Level it out. Great. The line back on the horizon. Small corrections on the yoke will lead to more accurate turns. Okay. Another training complete. Yes, yeah, it's probably going to be all first flight and training <laughs> as the let's play part one. But. Do not worry, we will be going through a lot of the uh, the missions as well. We'll see, I mean, we might get uh, one during this. I don't know how many pieces of training there actually are. Oh, uh, let me try going back. So if we go back to headquarters, just to look and have an understanding. Okay, there's still a bit more. We could try taking the exam. And then after you take exams, you automatically get these planes, I guess. You get these unlocked. Throttle management, maneuver test, powering settings. I mean, some of these are really short too. Let's go through these. Power setting. Yeah, some of them are like two minutes long, if that. Or that's what they suggest. I definitely, definitely want to do the pre-check setup because that's one of the things I really liked in the last flight simulator game where it, it throws you through the tutorial of turning the entire plane on step by step and then even taxis you to the, uh, this, the Let's landing or the where you take off, if essentially, you have the I'm drawing speed, the blank. Then the throttle's for you. Full control over the power output of the engine. 
in the Cessna 172 that relates directly to the RPM displayed the take -off on the tachometer on the PFD. Pull back on the throttle to reduce RPM to 1800. Okay. Where do you want it at? 1800? More? There we go. Look how your speed and altitude are also decreasing. Oh. That's good. Okay, let's throttle back up to 2,400 RPM. Move it back up. Almost. Push the throttle to reach 2,400 RPM. Oh, I see it. Your okay, speed I was... is increasing now. Oh. Trying to see it on the dashboard. Same attitude, your altitude will keep climbing as well. It's right here. 2,400. That's good. Good? You did well, but you can do better. Yeah, of course. Is Practice that it? getting comfortable with the relationship between the throttle and RPM. Okay, that's another training complete. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's see what we got for the next one. We gotta be there. All right, hey, I'll take it. All right, let's go into the next one, the maneuver test. We're getting through these pretty quick. This one's like three minutes. By the way, we're at the 37 minute mark. If you are enjoying this, leaving likes does help out a ton. I appreciate all the support the on every of maneuvering a plane episode. through the air isn't a mystery and to you I'm anymore. excited to see where this goes. Now it's time to test the skills you've learned. As you can see, we're cruising at 6,000 feet on a north heading of 360 degrees. Start by descending to 5,500 feet while maintaining a northerly heading. While descending, reduce throttle to avoid overspeed. If your speed is in the yellow section of the airspeed indicator, it means you are overspeeding. Reduce throttle to idle and pull gently on the yoke to slow down. Okay, so they want 5,500. While descending, reduce throttle to avoid overspeed. Got That's it. good. Oh. Now, climb to 6,000 feet and turn to a south heading. On the Cessna 172, you need full power to climb effectively. So climb to 6,000? Uh, oh shoot. How can I tell what degree? Okay, we need to go south. Oh, we need to go the other way. We're heading east now. And almost. Almost at 6,000, too. Close. And boom, there's 6,000. Nice. All right, next exercise. Maintain your heading of 180 degrees, stay at 6,000 feet, and adjust your airspeed to 80 knots. Adjust it to 80 knots. Okay. Like, almost completely off. There we go. That's 80, right there. Oh, a little too low. Hold on.
Shoot, we gotta climb. I lost too much altitude in the process. Okay. Get back on. Come on, almost there. There it is. 80. That's okay. Whew. Review straight and level flight to better manage your speed and altitude. You did well, but you can do better. I'm sure we can do better. We can always do better. Okay. Not too bad, not too bad. We'll go into the next one. All right, into the next one, pre-flight. Here's the one that I was interested in seeing. So this is prior, this is the flight check and what, what it was nice in 2020 in the top right, you literally have each individual option. Hello. Today, we're going to go over all the steps that precede turning on your engine. Those steps are essential to ensure your aircraft's integrity nice. and that everything is in order for a smooth and seamless flight. Here. First of all, stretch your legs a bit and take a look at your aircraft and your surroundings. Oh, wow. We never took that. much time to look at our aircraft from the outside, so take your time if you want to inspect it. You might have noticed some extra bits on your aircraft. These are the covers and chocks. Covers are installed when the plane is not in use and are meant to avoid damaging its sensitive parts. Chocks are there to immobilize the aircraft. You'll need to remove them before takeoff. Ah, oh, okay. Wait, that's actually so cool. I mean, it's something so small, but still. Uh, so how do we remove them? Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Got that. Pilot covers. All right. Remove before flight. Remove the chocks. And we're done for the outside. Now that we're sure your aircraft is functional right. and ready to taxi, let's check the inside. Okay. Get inside. Let's get to the matter at hand. You've been given an EFB, also referred to as an electronic flight bag. It's a tablet that stores critical flight information and is the ideal tool to prepare your flight plans and enhance your piloting experience. Open it and take a look. Feel free to follow a quick guided tour of its features. Okay, EFB, EFB with tab. Features, oh, that's what that map, is. A flight plan editor, aircraft and current flight information, a nav log as well as fuel and payload options. The That's EFB so cool. Plenty to offer, but if you want to get directly into the action, you can turn it off after you finish the quick tour. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's it seems definitely like we're all clear on the checklist. Good to have. Now start this pretty bird up. Flight planner. Okay. Cool. Control E. Oh. Control E. Now that we've covered all the preparations, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? Okay. This one, I guess, was pretty easy to do. Uh, sometimes, at least maybe with a more advanced plane, you have a lot more to check. Okay, taxiing. All right, we're almost there. We're almost ready. My goal is to at least get our PPL during this episode. So that's where we're at. That way, in future ones, we can run some missions. Taxiing refers to moving the aircraft on the ground under its own power. In particular, getting from the ramp out to the hold short point on the edge of the runway. Steering on the ground is managed through the rudder pedals. Oh, oh, That's oh. right, unlike driving a car, we turn by using our feet. Okay, ready? With a throttle idle, release your parking brake. Okay, I feel like there's got to be a way to do this on here. Okay. Huh. 
Now, gently increase throttle Dude, to get the aircraft I don't know which one moving. that was. Oh, that's flaps. Go easy on your throttle. <laughs> Use your rudder pedal to turn left and enter the taxiway. Increase throttle to gain forward momentum and then reduce RPM accordingly to match a fast walking speed while taxiing. Now, test the brakes. Watch your speed. One of these is... I know. There it is. Is that it? That's it. Good. Brakes checked. Taxi to the next exit, then come to a stop. Remember to control your speed with throttle and brakes. See the crossing in front of us. Stop before it, as if traffic was coming off the runway. How close are we stopping in it? Like right there. to holding point Alpha 1 next. It's at the far end of the airport, near the head of runway 21. Stay as close as possible to the taxiway center, marked by the yellow line, and watch your speed. Watch your speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm watching my speed. Watch your speed. I am. I don't see any speed limit signs. Watch your speed. Okay, all right, sorry, I'm going too After fast. After the right turn, come to a stop before the hold short point in prep for takeoff. Okay. Go to the hold point. That was good taxiing. The next challenge will be to keep the aircraft under control while at full throttle for takeoff. Okay. We're almost there. Let's do it. Taxiing. Next training. Start. Time for takeoff. Not too bad, not too bad. There's an old saying I like, a mile of road will take you a mile. A mile of runway will take you anywhere. Hmm. Taking off isn't hard, but there are a few key points to remember. First, we always take off into the wind, which won't be an issue on a calm day like today. Second, before we enter a runway, we always make sure it's clear. Check to the right to see if a vehicle is on the runway. And to the left to make sure no other planes are approaching. Looks clear to me. Runway numbers are not arbitrary. Each number matches the first two number of the runway's compass bearing, rounded to the nearest 10 degrees. What? For example, a runway orientated towards the north would be numbered 36, which is 360 degrees on a compass. Oh, I never Everything knew looks that. Everything good. No cross traffic. Go ahead and taxi into position. Huh. That's actually kind of cool. I, I now did not know that. Now slowly taxi onto the runway and align the plane with the center line. Then stop your plane just after the number 21. Is that like 21 degrees then? Or 210? Okay. And there. Excellent. I'm ready. All right, let's do this. Apply full power, and I'll walk you through the takeoff as we go. Full power applied. Stay on the center line, and keep pushing power until you reach 55 knots. Okay. We gotta hit 55 knots.
That's 55. Good. Now, gently pull back on the yoke. I'm pulling. And we're airborne. Hey. Oh. Line up the top Ooh. of your instrument panel, so it's a couple of inches <laughs> above the horizon. I stood out the window a bit. That'll pitch us up and set a good climb attitude. Okay. Maintain 75 knots, and we'll reach our target altitude of 5,500 feet in no time. Focus on flying straight. Use your rudders to remove the left yaw plane as when climbing. You can see our current yaw input by Gotta looking at the MFD's slipskid indicator. Is 10 too high? Ooh. Oh, we're too high. My knots are way, way off charts. Okay, I see. We want to pull back more. There we go. And we're almost so close to 55. Maintain 75 knots and climb to 5,500 feet. Yep, uh, there we go. Okay, 5,500 feet. You've reached your target altitude. That was a nice takeoff. Nice. Okay, there's the takeoff. Oh boy, are we going into landing now? Or are we are we maintaining flight? Next training, we got an A for that one. Landing yoke management. see how this one goes all right for this landing exercise I want you to focus on the yoke only we're close enough to the runway to land safely without adding any throttle maintain a speed of around 65 knots pitch down if you're going too slow pitch up if you're too fast okay keep your airspeed at 65 knots when you're 10 feet above the runway it's time to flare to flare means to raise the nose of the aircraft to slow your descent for a softer landing, but without ever leveling off or climbing. The main landing gear will touch down before the nose will does. Okay, so we want to be at about 65. Align with the runway. Uh... Are we just... Okay. I mean, we're not going to maintain 65 by doing this. I think we were going too fast. We're coming up on flare height. Resist the temptation to pull back. Okay. I'm now, listening focus to you. on the end of the runway and pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. Nice. Now, apply the brakes progressively to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Use rudder pedals to stay on the center line. Well done, but there's room for improvement. Okay. I mean, yeah, there was definitely room for improvement there. But... Yeah, that was a little confusing because it told it wanted me to maintain the 65, but at the same time, I I don't know. It we are going like way too fast for all that. Flight plan? I guess there is no flight plan. Alright, let's go with this. Throttle management. So this one's specific to How fast to handle the throttle? In the first part of this landing exercise, I want you to stay on the glide path by using the throttle. You can make small corrections with the yoke to stay aligned with the runway. Smooth action on the throttle is key for remaining oh, on the correct Oh, I'm not even controlling the plane with like. If you find up yourself too high, reduce your power. I'm specifically if you're too low, going right and left. Increase it. Wait, Remember I'm though, right. always make soft corrections. You don't want to overcompensate. Now you can use the elevator to land. Use the elevator? What? Line with the runway. Okay. Five hundred. 
Reduce throttle to idle. Oh, I was already idle. Now, focus Ooh. on the end of the Ooh. runway and pull back slightly on the yoke to aim the nose just above it. That's fine. Nice. Now, apply the brakes to slow us down and bring the plane to a stop. Flying brakes? I think a bit more practice may be a good idea. <laughs> hey, as long as we made it out alive, that's what matters, okay? Throttle management. Okay, I'm I'm getting to the point where I'm ready. Hold on, let's let's see. Let's go back to the certification. Okay, so we're back in headquarters now. How much is left? Downwind, first flight solo. Follow a traffic pattern to prepare for land. Okay, we'll do this. I'm not going to do the first flight solo. I'm just going to go right into the certification. See if we can get it. Because we're at, we're at the point where I feel like we've done just about everything. Okay. From start to finish. We're currently flying on the downwind leg. At the standard traffic pattern altitude of 6,000 feet. It's a flight path parallel to the landing runway, but in the opposite direction. In downwind, you want to start preparing for landing. That means setting your speed and flaps configuration. We are so, passing okay, the it's over the runway, there. so go ahead and reduce RPM to 1700. It will help you to slow you down to 80 knots and begin your descent. Okay, 1700. The flaps provide extra lift at the expense of additional drag. This extra lift allows flying at a lower airspeed. Flaps allow for smoother and shorter landings. Go ahead and extend 10 degrees of flaps, all while maintaining current speed. Okay. One of these, I we know. We'll turn to the base leg when the end of the runway is at a 45 degree angle behind us. Want to get those knots up? Go. Man, maintaining exactly 80 is tough. Turn left onto the base leg. Okay, turn left. Oof, we lost some with that. Try to keep our speed around 75 knots. Okay, we're we're still at. Keep an eye on okay. the runway as we get ready for our final turn. We're still at seventy-five ish. Went from eighty down to seventy-five. Turn left onto final. Okay, turn in left. Oh. Keep a stabilized approach with 65 knots airspeed and prepare for landing. Use throttle and flaps as required to adjust the glide slope. 500. Yeah, we're gonna have to kick some throttle up. Get a little too close to this mountain top here. There we go. Okay. Now we go in for landing. Apply the brakes and stop the plane. Applying them brakes. And there it is. Perfect. Not perfect, but still it got that the job was done. A perfect traffic pattern execution. Well done. Oh, it was. Wait, it was perfect? Wait, really? 
No. Don't tell me it was. Downwind training complete. Damn, 99%? Okay, hey. Final approach and landing, 73. Hey, it's still an A. I'll take that. All right, let's go straight into... I mean, all we have left is flying your own. Well, let's go straight for, for this. Oh, wait, it costs credit. Hold on, what's this one do? And now that I know it costs credits, I'm like, uh-oh. Oh, is it literally just take off? You literally just take off and land. Okay. Sure. You know what? We can do that. Okay. Begin. It's time. Your first solo flight. I'll be watching from the ground. In radio contact if you need me. But something tells me you won't. I think we got this. Your goal is to complete Sedona's left-hand traffic pattern on your own. Remember everything we covered in our previous sessions, and you'll be just fine. Good luck. See you on the other side. All right. Time for takeoff. Let's get to it. All right, it's just me now. And you all watching. Hope for the best here. Because now we're solo flying. All right, let's slowly pull back here. Nice. Reach 5,000 feet. 5,300 feet. Go for that. Like, yeah. Give it a little bit of a third person view. Maintain 75 knots. Okay. Almost. The hardest part is maintaining the out or getting that altitude and maintaining at the same time. All right, we're turning left here. I also feel like a lot of times I turn too abruptly, but it seems like we're we're doing it. We're at like 90 right now. Okay, we got another left coming up. We're at 100 knots. Turn left again. That was a little too, eh, not great there. But that's fine. Reach the 6,000 feet. Climb a bit here. Almost. We're so close to that 6,000. Boom. There it is. Maintain 80 knots. Okay. And now we just got to reach the end there. Getting a little too many. Go back up. Even it out here.
I'm a little bit higher on both of them. I guess in that case, I should just drop the throttle. Maintain 75. Hey, we're at like 120. <laughs> but we're also going in for the land soon, so. Turn left for final approach. Yeah. We're way higher up than we initially were during the training, but I think the good thing about this here is now I can just straight up even things out, start slowing down. Landing, I think. Uh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bumpy, a little bumpy. That's okay. Brake applied. And there it is. Boom. I think a bit more practice may be a good idea. Ah, uh, no, nah, we're fine. You're on your way to becoming one hell of a pilot. <laughs> yeah, a little bit more, eh, whatever. I mean, as long as we get it done, right? First solo flight, there it is. All right, let's do it. We're going for the certification. I was a little nervous about that one, but we're just going straight to it. Take the exam, 2,000 credits. Oh boy. Clouds, you can do no clouds. Sure, we'll leave clouds on. Private pilot license airplane certification. I wonder what happens if you run out of credits. Like, do you have to go out and do something else then? It's time. Your first ever check. Oh boy. Ride. Start by removing the covers and shocks, then join me inside. Okay. Wow, so you actually have to go through and that this part is so cool, I love that. Take this off. Alt N to skip taxi. Pause system test. Okay. Control E. Wait for engine startup. Your goal is to complete a left hand traffic pattern, respecting the flight path and all required speeds. Rely on what you have learned in your trainings, and you'll be fine. Now, show me the best traffic pattern that you've got. Announce taxi. Kilo Lima Delta Juliet traffic Cessna November 6 9 or 156 is taxiing to runway 27. Okay. I don't know what the speed was here. Runway 27, so is that 270 degrees? If he says, like, watch your speed, then I'll slow it down. See, this is the kind of stuff I've always been wanting and waiting for in Flight Sim. I, I want more simulator games that have, like, a career mode in a way built like this. Because I it just is so much more immersive, in my opinion. I mean... Speaking of immersive, that plane didn't even have its the uh, wheels at the bottom of it for a second there. But even like, I don't know, I know completely different genre and everything, but the NBA games or like the NFL games. I always want to play more like actually put together storyline, objective based 
games like that that have a story because it's it's just so cool in my opinion but there's a lot of stuff that they can do and having like a whole career system in this is is really I feel like I'm gonna play this for a good bit okay bounce take off Kilo Lima Delta Juliet traffic Cessna November 6 9 or 156 taking off runway 27 left closed traffic enter runway 27 take off All right, let's do this. Seventy. All right, pull. I think now we're actually at that during all of our training and stuff we were at the I know maybe we are I don't know if we're in New York now the area that I chose or if we're somewhere else I'm the 500 That might have been a little too much. I wonder how, like, restrict they are. Or strict they are. <laughs> For giving you this, uh, this license in the game. I mean. Okay. So I gotta climb 2,000. Let's turn. Downwind end. Engine one. Oh, we're going too fast. I saw it flashing there. I was like, what's going on? Announce position. Kilo Lima, Delta Juliet traffic Cessna November 6, 9 or 156, one miles southeast, 1,000 feet inbound to land runway 27. The stuff that I really want to go for is like the commercial pilot one because I think that would be a lot of fun, especially if you have like, uh, flying missions i've always i don't know even in like space games i've always really enjoyed like passenger flights all right we're going way too fast bounce uh -oh. uh -oh. kilo lima delta juliet traffic cessna november six nine or one five six is on final runway two seven to land got this to be a hot landing break 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 reduce speed Ooh. stop at the short hole <laughs> Okay, we're good, we're good. We're good. I see why it said too fast back there. I should have taken it a little wider. Uh oh, uh oh, I'm choking, I'm choking. 
Alright, let's slow it down. I, th I think we'll be okay, though. Hopefully. Hopefully. You know? Okay. Kilo Lima Delta Juliet traffic Cessna November 6 9 or 156 is taxiing to parking. Taxiing to parking. All right, let's see if we get our, our PPL. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. Do we actually have to go and uh, park and everything too? It makes me nervous that the guy doesn't say anything. Like say something. Okay, that's good. All right, great job. Just feel like I'm in an actual test. <laughs> Sir? How might it like anything? Like that was good, no? Okay, that wasn't good, no. It's so cool that you can actually see people walking around too. Break there. All right. a little bit harder than I expected it to be. No. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna release it. We're gonna crash. We're gonna crash. We're gonna crash. Okay, it doesn't exist. It's cosmetic. Set parking brakes. End flight. Control shift E. Shut down procedures. Wait for engine to shut down. You're on your way to become one hell of a pilot. On my way. I passed. Woo we got an A. <laughs> oh my god. 100%. Wow, we got 100, 100, 79, 74. All you need to do is get a C. Out of a, a million points, I got 904,000. Hey, we did it. We did it. Congratulations, certification, private pilot license, airplane pass. Allows you to fly a single airplane in good weather conditions and perform takeoffs and landings from land. Private pilots cannot fly aircraft for commercial purposes. And now we have all of these to fly as well. Congratulations on passing your PPL exam. Hopefully that's the first of many steps on your career path. Allows you to fly your recreational. PPL allows oh. you to fly recreationally and begin to build up your flight hours. First flight missions are a great way to increase your experience. Let's go back to headquarters and review the specializations board to learn. Okay. As you can specializations. see, the career journey of a pilot can take many different paths. As I said earlier, your PPL is the first step allowing you to fly recreationally and perform first flight missions, taking people on tours around the local area. 
As you build up your flight hours and earn more certifications, other specializations will become available. Take a look around. Then when you're ready, head to the missions list to see what's available. Okay, cool. So now we have, yeah, we have other airplane specializations that we can learn. Level three required. So we would have to level up flight seeing. Back to HQ. Honestly, I probably could have did the, I mean, we got the training done. You have missions here as well. On this map, you can see all the missions currently available to you. There's one mission currently available. What do we have? First flight is scenic ride over NJ with Michael. Okay, wait, so there's stuff like that too. Passenger transport. You need to complete all the specializations, prerequisite first. What else is this? Wait, that's pretty cool. Wait, is this actually New Jersey, Linden, New Jersey? Staten Island. Okay. Well, we got it done. For now, though, that is going to be it. If you did enjoy this episode, again, leaving likes does help out a ton. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. I apologize for most of it being tutorial, but we at least got our first certification. So now we can start going for the other ones. Um, it looks like for these, we need more missions complete. Okay, perform first flight missions. Be able to unlock this. And then this one is, okay, same thing. And then you can start going for these. Hoist endor endorsement. Yeah, a lot of these are, are pretty cool. Instrument rating, commercial pro pilot license. Cool. Yeah, I'm excited to see where this goes. But all right, for now, that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.